Today it's all about that bass. I got my stereo sitting on this IKEA shelf thing underneath my TV and to be honest it doesn't really look that good. But today we are going to build a base for it that's going to make it look a thousand times better. And this is a simple and quick DIY project. Nomad makes. So these are the materials I'll be using. This is a reclaimed something from a bed and just a regular 2x8. I think I'll, I'll plane them down a little bit first and see where we go from there. So yeah. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. I'd normally be doing this on my miter saw, but it's packed with other stuff for my, my credenza build, so we're doing it this way now. I'll just cut this one with the hand saw, it's just as quick. That was the maiden voyage of the Spear and Jackson. <laughs> I'm building a white oak media stand to sit underneath my TV. That, however, is taking some time. And at the time of filming, I was going completely crazy from a massive dig I was doing in my backyard. I needed a quick win and a small motivational project. That's why I'm making this base for the IKEA shelf in the meantime. I'm going to rip this down to four centimeters and uh, this here I don't know yet. I'm going to have to take this other board and try to find out the uh, proportions that I find visually pleasing, right? So first I'm going to clean up one edge of this. And I think I'll go for eight centimeters. I think that will be a good ratio between these, right? Come down about that much and we get, yeah. So let's try with eight centimeters. good way to improve your accuracy is to use a stop lock. I'll show you a few nice stop lock tricks later in the video. So I'll be using my uh, six millimeter CMT flat topped grooving bait for this. So this is a great alternative if you don't have a dado stack or your saw doesn't accept one. The Laguna accepts a, a dado stack, but I just haven't gotten around to testing. This is, of course, completely overkill for what I'm doing here, the accuracy that I need. But since I have this little nice set of setup box, I 
thought I'd uh, use that one. Yeah, I want the grooves to be one centimeter deep. So these are the test results for all the individual blocks. <laughs> like I said, completely overkill. Here I adjust the dado by hand, trying to stay a bit shy of the line. I'm also using a backer plate of MDF to prevent blowout. Since the fit was a bit tight, I sneak up on it using the ubiquitous playing card. I hold a reference block, put the card in between the stop block and the reference block, remove the card and then move the stop block up to the reference block. What? Perfect! So now the dados are cut, like so. Because I can't leave well enough alone, I plan to cut dados in the, the stretchers the same way. This is a different way of cutting a dado using a stop block. Here I change out the stop block using a reference block. Then I put a scrap piece of the correct dado size between the blocks. Add another spacer equal to the curve of my blade. Here using some 6mm MDF. Squeeze the reference block up to it. Remove the spacer and then move the stop block. Perfect dados every time, and if not, use the playing card method to creep up on the fit. It's a fairly simple design. This is more or less it. This is like the minimalistic design of this thing. Of course, I want to make like a chamfer on the end. But I wanted it really like super minimalistic. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of like a palette, but still it looks good. <laughs> I think at least, but that's me, you know. And then this will be my first pr project. Now we'll get India ink. I recently started making and selling my own hide glue, Nomad Hide Glue. Nomad Hide Glue is a traditional liquid hide glue with extended open time. But why would you want to use Nomad Hide Glue instead of normal wood glue or PVA? Nomad Hide Glue is reversible with moisture and heat, so you can break open joints if you need to make repairs or you've made mistakes. It has a long open time of 30 minutes or more in 23 degrees Celsius or 74 degrees Fahrenheit and bin temperature, which makes it a great natural alternative to epoxy if you want more open time. It lubricates tight-fitting joints really well. It is organic, non-toxic and made from only natural materials. Be aware that Nomad High Glue needs to be heated in a glue pot, wax pot or double boiler before use. So if you want to try out Nomad High Glue, check out the links below and I really appreciate the support guys. So I set up a bus stop block here and a uh, John Peters style waste board. And I've cut the test piece that I'm happy with. I like the shape here with uh, the size of the, the square or butt end as opposed to the 45 degree here. And what this does is that it's a zero clearance, so it will help prevent blow out. And also it gives me a stop block here. So I've beveled the sides on the legs as well. 
<laughs> Can we call them legs? What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to use my uh, trusty little Stanley Handyman and I'm just going to ease over all the corners. And then I think I'll give it a quick sand down with, I think I'll be going straight to 120 and just stop there. So I've done my test piece here with India ink. It's a completely generic one that I got off a hobby shop. So I'll probably uh, finish this with something, maybe poly or whatever, but this is what I'll do for the color. And all the pieces have been sanded to 120. Then I've raised the grain with water and then I've sanded lightly with 120 again. <laughs> you think Vader approves of the color, huh? Whenever I use these kind of nitrile gloves, I always use two pairs. That's simply because I get so sweaty hands inside of these. If one of the gloves break and I need to put another one on, I just simply can't. I don't know if I have enough of this ink. I'll try using a separate container here and I'll start with these. For lack of a better name, we'll call them legs. Yeah, I think the end grain is going to need a second coat. Apart from that, this is kind of cool. We won't finish the bottom, there's no need for that. My 3D printed painter triangles. Whenever I work with finish, I always like to use a, like a secondary container or something, so I don't have to use the main container in, in case I pollute the finish in some kind of way. It's also a lot easier to get my rag down into this. Wow. This thing is kind of starting to dry and it's making the gloves sticky. Are you liking this Vader? So yeah, this is like a simple DIY project, I guess. It's quite fun. You can do something like this. You could make it as intricate as you'd like, right? You go crazy on your router table, like with bevels or shapes to this kind of thing, or it's like with everything, it's just the imagination that it's the limitation, right? It's a couple of hours later, and this is my first time using in the ink, as I said. And by the way, it's a completely generic brand. I bought it at a hobby shop. It's not really a woodworking product, it's just ink. The wood, it looks charred. Kind of because it's black, of course, but I think it's quite cool. So I'm going to use this Danish oil as a finish. And I'm hoping, since it like, contains both oil and urethane, that it will kind of give this black some more vibrance or something. Yeah. I really like listening to woodworking podcasts while I work. In the background here, there's the Shop Sounds podcast playing.
It only degrades and extends the bleed a bit to bits and also make the very <laughs> These kind of half laps, or I don't know, maybe it's quarter laps. They're kind of self squaring. You know? I checked the diagonals, I was more within one millimeter. I don't know if you noticed, but I was running the drill bit a little bit backwards or in reverse first to avoid the tear out. I'm using a tape flag as a depth stop. I only want to drill through the first stretchers here. So the shank of this screw here, it's uh, a little bit narrower than this bit. That means that uh, the screw will then pull these stretchers down into the legs. Current sinking bit. Yeah, that's it. Sure doesn't look like much, but it's not much. It's just the stand. <laughs> we all, of course, want our furniture to look all minimalistic and nice, but it always ends up cluttered anyway, at least for me. But again, that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you can do so on Patreon. you find a link for that and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. And of course, you'll find links for my Nomad hide glue there as well. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.